Good evening and welcome to the PM edition of News Updates on 247 Connect. Now to the details of the stories. In our first story, the Electoral Commission has targeted to register about 1.35 million people in the 2023 voters registration exercise, which commences from September 12 to October 2, 2023. This is based on the EC's projection that at least 1,350,000 persons might have attained 18 years since the last registration exercise in 2020. Announcing the dates and procedures for the exercise at a press briefing in Accra yesterday, the EC chairperson, Jean Mensah, indicated that at the time at the time of the last registration exercise in 2020, the National Identification Authority had registered over 10 million persons. And now away from that, the aggrieved family of late investigative journalist Ahmed Swale say they have stopped visiting the police station to inquire about the state of the investigations into the death of their relative. According to the family, four years after the gruesome murder of Ahmed Swale, they have not achieved any closure. Ahmed Swale 31 was an investigative journalist who worked with Tiger IPI, the investigative firm established by Anas Aramiyao Anas, known for its use of undercover journalistic methods to expose corruption and other ills in society. Now, the Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the Economic Community of West African States, Abdel Fattah Musa says the community is going to Niger with its resources and any organization willing to help is welcome. Mr. Musa said this at the 48th Extraordinary Meeting of the ECOWAS Committee of Chiefs of Defense Staff underway in Accra as the two-day meeting will enable the CDS to strategize on possible military intervention in Niger. However, the Niger Republic military junta has since Monday, July 26, put in detention Mr. Mohamed Bazou, the president of Niger, and his family and members of his cabinet. A 60-year-old woman, Kunjit Dut, has been beaten to death after she was accused of being a witch at Bumbuna in the Nyonyo Nesiani district of the Northeast region. According to the family, the deceased was summoned by some of the community members after one of them reported seeing her in his dream, trying to harm him. The family also added that the woman was murdered on her way to report the accusation against her to her family in the next village. However, this incident comes as Parliament recently passed a bill seeking to prescribe witchcraft accusations. And now let's do some business news. Organized Labour has said that it will reject the government's plan to introduce a cost of living allowance in next year's salaries negotiations instead of increasing the salaries of public sector workers. COLA is an allowance given to government employees as short-term relief when immediate salary increments cannot be made. Speaking to journalists in Accra, Deputy General Secretary of Trade Union Congress Joshua Ansar said that Organized Labour would demand a rise in salary instead of COLA. Ghana's fiscal deficit to gross domestic product of 9.0% was the highest in West Africa in 2022. The African Development Bank West Africa Economic Outlook 2023 report has revealed the country's fiscal deficit, however, averaged 5.8% of GDP between 2014 and 2020, and this placed it as the second highest in the ECOWAS region. According to the report, the fiscal deficit increased in all ECOWAS countries in 2021, except Guinea and Liberia, where it declined by 044 and 2.1 percentage points, respectively. And now, in crossing the borders and doing some foreign news, a private jet has crashed into a car and a motorbike on a highway in Malaysia, killing at least 10 people. All eight people on the aircraft died along with two motorists on the ground. The jet exploded into a fireball on impact with thick black smoke seen rising from the side. Video clips from the scene showed. It was traveling from the resort island of Langkawi to Selangor, west of the capital Kuala Lumpur. Officials said the Beechcraft Model 390 aircraft had lost control contact with the air traffic control tower before it crashed on Thursday. Still in foreign news, an alliance of seven political parties in South Africa has signed a pact in a bid to unseat the governing African National Congress in the 2024 election. The multi-party charter for South Africa said if they come to power, they would work together and allocate ministerial positions and parliamentary seats. They are also seeking to keep Julius Malema's Economic Freedom Fighters Party from being voted into power. The agreement comes as the country battles an alien economy, corruption, unemployment and unprecedented energy 
energy crisis. Analysts say the ANC risked losing its parliamentary majority for the first time since South Africa's return to democracy in 1994. The new bloc, however, has not decided who will be elected president if it's successful in the election. And now straight into the field of sports. In a highly anticipated move, Ghana Premier League giants Accra Hearts of Oak has officially introduced Dutch trainer Martin Koopman as their new head coach in preparation for the upcoming season. Following persistent speculation in the media, the club confirmed Koopman's appointment at the Pobiman Complex yesterday as the team defeated Miracle Land FC 11-1. Koopman steps into the role, succeeding Serbian tactician Slavko Matej, who held the position previously. Matej, the last substantive coach at Heart of Oak was selected after the departure of Samuel Bordu early in the previous season. in sports, Manchester City duo Ellen Holland, Kevin De Bruyne and Argentina captain Lionel Messi have been named by UEFA as the three finalists for the 2022-2023 Player of the Year Award. The announcement was made on Thursday through an official statement from the European Football Governing Body with other great players narrowly missing out on the shortlist. Holland's incredible season with Manchester City last season got him on the list despite his inability to play at the World Cup with his country, Norway. And in the world of entertainment, up-and-coming Ghanaian artist Soft has released his second single of the year, Dapped Adomura. The song is a genre bending mix of gospel, high life, and Afrobeat, and it reflects Soft's unique musical vision. Soft grew up listening to a variety of genres, including reggae, high life, and hip life. In recent years, he has been influenced by Afrobeat, fusion, and dancehall. His music is a fusion of these different influences, and it creates a sound that is both familiar and innovative. <music> And finally, in the news, one half of the X Factor duo Reggie and Bully, Reggie Zippy, has announced his divorce from his wife of 15 years, Edith Ward. The Ghanaian UK based musician made the announcement on his social media platforms on Friday, August 18, 2023. In a lengthy post, Reggie said that he and Edith had decided to go their separate ways after a long and difficult decision making process. The announcement of Reggie and Edith's divorce came as a shock to many of their fans. The couple had been together for over 20 years and had been married for 15 years. They had three children together, two sons and a daughter. And that's all for today. Have a good evening.